Hi, I'm Commissioner John Hutchings, and I'm out here at uh, Animal Services on Martin Way, and I'm going to go in and pay my dog license. Let's go. Well, here I am. I'm going to renew my dog license. And if you look, this is the second notice. So I'm going to pay it before my license gets suspended. I'm only kidding. They don't suspend dog licenses. But let's see what happens and go through the process together. Hello. Hi. I'm here to renew my dog license. All right, great. Are there any changes here? I didn't look at that. Nope, no changes. And I'm saving postage on a stamp. And it says $12. Is that the total or is there any That's fees? Correct. It's just $12. No. Just, $12, just $12. Can't beat that deal. It's a heck of a deal. Better than my car tabs. <laughs> <laughs> Does it show the make and model of my dog and, and all that information and age? It shows, yes, it shows breed, um, color, whether it's spayed or neutered, the chip number. And what is the breed? The breed says it's a chow. It's type. a chow. Kind of a chow and a retriever mix. Thinking. Now, do you, does Animal Services then pay an extra 3% processing fee from using a bank card? We do. I think it's a bit more for credit. So cash is preferred. Debit, but or check. It's, it's easy. There you go. Thank you. I forgot to ask you, do you still have your tag from last year? Uh, the one that's a... Tag? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then we don't issue a new one if you still have the old one. Oh, you don't? Okay. And I don't put a sticker on it for next year? No. Okay. <laughs> and do you mind shredding that for me, please? Okay. Thank you very that kindly. Now, that didn't take very long, and now I'm legal. Can I see your license? Even your best friend needs a license. Okay, let's get you home. Hi, I'm Commissioner John Hutchings, and I'm here at Joint Animal Services on Martin Way in Lacey. And I'm with, uh, with Rick Torgerson. He is a retired colonel of the United States Army, and he's also uh, the director of the Joint Animal Services. Uh, hello, Rick. Hey, how you doing? Fine, thanks. What's and on, Hutch? Uh, we're spending uh, some time here at Animal Services to learn more about what they do uh, and uh, the services they provide and how important it is. And right now we're in the kitty room. And you're going to show us a kitty cat. Yeah, this, is a, this is the cat adoption room. And uh, when you first walk in here, you might notice right away that there are very few cats. But we're surprised this year. We just don't have many cats. Usually in the spring, we'll see a lot more cats, both adults and kittens. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, whether or otherwise, we just don't see that many. Um, and this is Miss Fitzgerald. Uh, no, well, this is Ella. Oh, Ella. Yeah. Okay. It's Ella. You could. You I could presumed. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And she, you, will, if you come in, the first thing you want to do is look at the the tag on the cage, uh -huh. which actually gives the animal's name and talks a little bit about their background or a little bit about them. And it says here, shy but likes to be gently petted. It's kind of like okay. me. Right, so what, yeah. why don't we just see what, we, what happens well, here. I noticed though that she has, she has two rooms, like she, a condo. Well, yes, and in fact they are like condos, and the reason for that is that 
in the olden days, animals were given, and we have to sometimes do this, put one animal in each of these rooms. But the ideal situation is that they have choices, and they can spread out away from their food and where they would, you know, defecate and urinate. And that actually helps them have a better, uh, less stressful life while they're here. And so it really is important for, them, for us to give them the room that they need. Is that a regulation though? Or is Not this a regulation, just a... it's an animal welfare consideration that you want to always have is, is peacefulness for the kitties because it, you know, they get stressed pretty easily, uh, especially in a strange environment, and the room that they need to spread out without having to you know, uh, wind up putting you know, half of their body in the, in the, uh, in the uh, pan here for, for defecation and urination, or get their tails wet when they're on this side with the food. Notice that uh, the food yeah, yeah. and the pan, other are pan separate. are separate. That's totally just separate. like at my house. Also, good hygiene. Yes, you want yeah. to keep one in from the other. And I've noticed if you're if you're looking for a cat that is going for the Guinness World Record of sleeping, uh, Ella has been going on a solid six minutes now since we've been standing here. <laughs> she hasn't. I mean, she's alive well, remember, and well and very she's peaceful. She's shy. We haven't gotten her out yet. And normally, we would not just let someone come in here and open this door. We always have a volunteer or a staff member here to help. Ooh, volunteers. Because, we will talk about volunteers yes, in a little bit. Yes, and but but. Cats, you know, they, they can be frightened easily, and when they get panicky, They're they skittish. tend to claw and bite. So we have to be careful that we don't get anybody injured, including staff and volunteers. And me. Well, you especially, but, yeah. you know. Not especially. <laughs> right, just right now. <laughs> okay, so we open the door. Hi, Ella. Hey, little sweetheart. Now, why don't you, why don't you reach so in here pretty. like I'm doing and just pet her. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Let's go a little slow here. Hello, Ella. Smell me? Yep. That's a girl. Oh, yeah. yeah. Paw that cloth. That, yeah. So here's a chance to get introduced to the animal, and we, we'll try and pull her out here in a second and see how she does. Um, but if you have other animals at your household, we mm -hmm. can arrange to have you bring them in and see how the cat interacts with them. Oh, that's a good idea. And that's idea. a really good idea because oh, that gives you yeah. an idea whether or not you're going to have compatibility. Now, not always, because it always takes some adjustment, especially with cats, but uh, nonetheless. See, she's doing really well. Oh, let's she's let, a, let's, oh, she's let's a try and bring her up. Hey, sweetie. Come on. Come on. Okay, yeah, she says, oh, I've been what sleeping for so long. Is she? Well, she's part Siamese, definitely. But, I see that. that oh, oh, Siamese well, oh she's, okay, we'll just let her take her blanket with her then. How's yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, just like a kid. Yeah. Hello, Ella. And Hello, you know, sweetie. a lot of the animals we get in here have had tough times. Um, you know, we don't deny that, and we don't always have everybody up here that is, has just come into the, to the clinic, or, or I should say the shelter. <laughs> she is so sweet and so gentle. But, but, but the idea is, you know, my mother, she's 95, and she has a cat in her condo, and it just makes a better life for her. Yeah. And, and cats do really well, I think, individually and, and sometimes in groups, but sometimes not. It's a wonderful so having companion animal. Because huh? they're, it's a wonderful companion animal. Of course. Because they, they're pretty self-sufficient, really. Yeah. Yep. And, and uh, they can be very independent, too, you know, you have to realize that. Right. Dogs tend to be a little more dependent. In other words, they take a lot more care and consideration. And noisier. Well, they can, yeah, yeah definitely be that. <laughs> now, it says here, uh, uh, no children. Uh, is that because of her shyness and her age? Probably because she doesn't really get along that well with you know, small people. Small people tend to be... Um, they're active. Less careful with their actions. Right. And, yeah. um, and high energy. We, we don't want to put a human youngster in jeopardy of getting clawed or bitten. But yeah. you saw just now that an adult, I mean, as long as you're gentle with her, she's fine. So, um, oh, you just you broke know, her Guinness but, record but, now. But she has to start all over again. This is a good guide. So, like, if you if you have a if you have a two year old or a three year old in the household, it's probably not the animal that you want, even if you want a cat. Yeah. Okay. Do the activity. Um, uh, yeah, and you know, but another cat might be great with kids. Now she's not chipped. Uh, no, but she will get chipped before you adopt her. She will be chipped. Yeah, okay, will is chipped. that a matter of practice we, we here? We do that as a matter of practice. In fact, okay. um, licensing, which is very important, as you know, mm -hmm. okay, licensing and chipping are, are critical needs for a lost animal to be recovered and given back to the proper owner. But there's some responsibility in that. You can have an animal that's chipped, but if but if you've given the animal to somebody else and you haven't changed the identity of the owner, then we trace it back. It goes back to that original owner. And I would and have to prove that the animal is mine. What makes it harder for us to? Yes, you come in, say you come in, and you've been the owner, but the chip goes to the original owner, and you have difficulty then, unless you can say, oh, I've got pictures, let me show you pictures, or I've got veterinary bills with a cat's name on it in yeah. my name. Then we start to believe you more than just your word, because people say a lot of things that because they're motivated to get the animal more than they are because they really own it. 
Right, right. You know, right. I mean, so shipping, shipping is important. Yeah, shipping is very important. And what does that cost? And, uh, well, we provide clinics where it's a reduced rate, and we can talk more about that later because okay. I don't really we'll have do the that. value. But we do actually have shipping clinics that we can talk about. Okay. Thank you, Ella. Thank you very much, honey. Yep, and, and we'll, uh, we'll see you later. And perhaps she's, look at she's back adopted. in here, quite calm again, and you know, just going. Well, you know, I was sleeping. What are you doing? Yeah. Okay. So Bless why don't heart. we go down and look at a puppy now? Let's do okay. that. All right. We're in the treatment room now at uh, Animal Services. And Rick, uh, explain to me what we're doing here. Well, first of all, you'll notice and probably even can see that there's some kitties, kittens, almost all with one adult in here. Um, most of these animals here are being held because they're actually waiting to be at the point where we'll actually put them up for adoption. God, they're cute. So, you know, <laughs> kitties, especially the young ones, are cute. And there's more kitties in here than there are on adoption, which brings up the point that we have large holding areas throughout the building that get used for just holding purposes simply because we don't just take an animal that someone brings in and put it up for adoption immediately. It usually takes us an examination and some time to make sure that they're eating well and that they're behaving normally and that there are other issues that we don't know about. If there are veterinary needs, we can actually take them to a veterinarian. What I, what I wanted to come in here for is that there's also a puppy in here right here on the bottom, mm -hmm. this little gray one. Yep. There's a little cattle dog with no name yet. Well, everybody calls her a cattle puppy. Cattle puppy. She came in, this is a story that might interest mm. folks. She came in, with no names mentioned here, um, uh, as a request for euthanasia by a oh. family. And um, uh, supposedly the animal had uh, been hidden by the three-year-old, okay? And we, we were concerned about the health of the animal because, first of all, she was very depressed, had bloodshot sclera. In other words, on the outside, white parts of her eyes, it was entirely red. Let me inter interrupt you and tell, and tell people, uh, Rick Torgerson is also a veterinarian. Yeah, well, I don't practice anymore, but uh, pract I still practice in the sense that I'm, but, you know. But you know what you're talking about. Well, a lot, quite a bit of it, uh, yeah. but I haven't practiced for about 15, 20 years. I've been managing two-legged animals for a long time now. So, mm -hmm. um, But um, <laughs> this animal, People. I mean, when I first laid my eyes on her, she was very depressed, not, didn't want to move, was just like, don't touch me, you know, that kind of thing. What we do in those kinds of situations is we think there's potential there. We don't look at it that, well, why do they want to euthanize the animal? But in questioning the family, and I'll just leave it this way and tell you, because I don't want to incriminate anybody or anything at the, mm -hmm. the moment. Mm -hmm. In questioning the family, one of the persons asked was a three-year-old. Well, how did this happen? And it was Erica, who we'll interview today and mm -hmm. talk to. And uh, the three-year-old immediately said, Mommy did it. Well, honestly, that probably is the, the reality. So um, we persuaded the owners to sign off and give us the animal. Once we do that, we own the animal. And that animal, by the way, was taken immediately to a veterinary clinic. And by the way, we practice with, or we, we partner with a number of practices. There's probably 10 or 15 practices in the county mm -hmm. that we have relationships with. And they give us oftentimes reduced rates, support us in any efforts. And if one is full and can't take an animal to look at, Another might not, and we'll call around and get the place for them to be examined. And it's all about the care, care all of the about animals. The care of the animals, exactly. It's so, and it's, the, and it's, we're here for the animals, not to make money, but to take care of the animals. Yeah. So welfare is the Help name them of the thrive. game. Animal yeah. welfare is the name of the game. So her depressed state uh, was related to a head injury. We think she probably had a concussion. Didn't look at like she had a fractured skull, uh, but could have had some minor hairline fractures. I didn't see the radiographs. Um, but she was brought back here on cage rest. Now, we're going to take her out in a minute, and she may not look like a puppy that is hurting at all. But just a few days ago, she was in bad shape in terms of her demeanor, in terms of her active level. Okay? Now, how old is she? She's probably eight weeks or old. Eight maybe. weeks, and uh, you just received her how long ago? We've had her for maybe a week. A week, okay, yeah, at this point, at this Four point. Four or five, five days, okay. probably. Okay, so, like I said, when she came in, she was just not willing to, you know, just don't touch me, leave me alone, and afraid of everybody. Oh, beautiful dog. Yes, well, she, well, she, and I've got to tell PTSD you, as there's well. a lot of interest internally here for them to adopt her, too. And, and just about, if you, we walk around the building, and you'll see animals in the back areas here walking around, those are all employee animals. 
they can bring their pets to this shelter every day they work. And that actually works pretty well for them too because they stay out of the house and they, they get, right. to get to play with the other animals that they get used to. And it's great with. therapy for the employees. Yeah, the employees. well, yeah, sure. that's just sort of the philosophy of the place but, too. But going back to, uh, to uh, cattle dog, this is this, this or cattle puppy, um, abused animals is an exceptionally serious and very touching issue that we have, uh, not only nationally, but even locally. Well, um, I think, you know, Erica can give you a lot more detail. Um, I would say that, um, and it's a known fact, that there's a connection between animals and humans, and that there's also a connection between animal abuse and human abuse. Um, if a family is abusing an animal, they may very well be, or will in the future, abuse children, for example, or spouses. Um, and that's a real, that's a fact. There's an association with that behavior. Yeah, yeah. I'm not telling you that it happens all the time, but it does happen a significant amount of time. And there have been some pretty well-publicized cases in the last year or so of some pretty serious bad things that happen to animals. Well, they've been in the local media, and it's just heart-wrenching when you read it uh, right. or you see the news, uh, the news piece. And part of our role here is <clears throat> to enforce laws that protect animals. Yeah. So whether it's yes. neglect, actual abuse, or dangerous animals, we have laws that help us enforce, we enforce them, and that implies sometimes we seize the animals from the owners, if we can show the definite evidence. So it's basically, we partner with the prosecutor's office, mm -hmm. and there are attorneys that work with us on a regular basis on cases, and we write up them and collect evidence and, and do the investigation. And you are very proactive when it comes to uh, animal abuse. Absolutely, and I, and I because- I love that. Like well, well, what I, I think, it, honestly, you know, it's not just me, it's the whole staff. Um, honestly, we see the good, the, the bad, and the ugly from yeah. the people. and. That's a frustrating thing, and there's a, a syndrome known as, uh, uh, you know, compassion uh, fatigue. Fatigue, uh -huh. and that that is where you know you want to always do the right thing for the animals in this case, and then but things happen, and you see people not doing that, and you just wonder yeah. how how can that possibly be? It you suffer from that. And you're not only your enforcement officers, but your staff. Yeah. Oh yeah. See these animals come in in their worst con con condition. Possible condition. Yeah. And uh, and and uh, that's got to be tough on on staff as well. And we've talked about absolutely, absolutely uh, emotional tough. debriefings. We've talked well, about well, and you staff. know, I think you know they need time away from doing their same job, and we're working on doing that more and more now. It's just tough because you know we have limited funds and that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Let me ask you real quick before we get her out. Do you give these kitties like uh, caffeine in the morning or something? <laughs> no. They're flipping and jumping and. <laughs> This Playing is normal kitten behavior. It is okay? hysterical. Yeah. You give them a ball, and you can see there's a little ball in there, and they're playing with one another. Like this one is ready to pounce on that yeah, one over there. But no there. energy drink in there? Because yeah, they, no, no, no. they are hysterical. No. Oh, yes, look at that one. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Let's, uh, let's okay, see Okay, let's pull out cattle dog. Hey, little one. Come here. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Come on. Yeah. That's a girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, how soft. Oh, yeah. how soft. What a beautiful... So here's an animal that somebody wanted to euthanize. Can you imagine? No, I can't. <laughs> Nor can we, okay? So this, this to me is the heart of what we do right here. You want to hold her? Oh, you bet. <laughs> Baby, don't, don't fall. Yeah, lick away. It's okay. Lick, lick away. You're fine. Now, she wouldn't have done this the other day. First of all, she hurt. Second of least, she didn't trust people. So oh. part of our process here is one, getting her healthy completely, and two, getting her to trust people again. Yes, Puppies trust are difficult. People. Puppies They depend places. on us to do they, the right thing for them. You know, them. they make mistakes in the house, and it's sometimes people get frustrated and take their frustration out on the animal. It's not the animal's fault. You know, they're difficult though, because you have oh, to, you have, they have to learn what, if they're going to be housebroken, they have to learn that, you know. And if they're older and they haven't learned that, it's more difficult to get them trained. Right. We have a rescue dog at home, and he makes mistakes occasionally. He's older, for one, and secondly, he's never really been in a home until we rescued him. We didn't rescue him. We took him from a shelter that we, we yeah. adopted him from. And um, and that guy is, you know... Well, we've had rescue dogs. It's the same thing. It takes a while to build up the trust again. The animals trust you. He would you. hide behind my wife when we walked him, yeah. that sort of thing. And Good now girl. he comes right up front, and he feels more confident. So and, explain to me explain to me the, the adoption process. If someone came well, in and say, hey, Ella... Uh, or kettle puppy. What, what well, would happen? Well, first of all, she's not up for adoption right now, and it won't be for a while. Um, but but I would say that it's really a simple process, but it requires the potential adopter to demonstrate responsibility. Okay, so we're going to ask questions about the size of the yard, 
other animals in the household. Um, the fees are, are not exorbitant. In fact, they're cheaper than all, almost any fees you'll find when people are doing this privately Canada. versus a public organization. So we have $70 for kitties and $90 for dogs. And we're able to underwrite the, the cost of the sterilization because every animal that's adopted is sterilized because there's really too many animals out there anyway. Um, so there are costs associated with it, but, that in, but, but our, our fees and, and um, uh, go towards you know, you know, vaccinations, <laughs> vaccinations and care that's required as they're yeah, growing up. grab her now oh, yeah. so I get oh, these yeah. hairs out of my eyes. <laughs> okay, now, I was going to let her run around the floor a little bit, but she is on cage rest, so what we'll do here, oh, you mean my little monster. Let's see what happens. Hey, little one. Okay? Okay? Yeah. You're going to be a beautiful, beautiful dog. Yeah. Um, one of my former staff, and she now works at the city of Lacey, um, she had a little cattle dog like this that had to have a leg amputated, and the owners didn't want it, and uh, she wound up adopting it herself. Oh. And that dog is, is very similar to this one in terms of need. But this, this, and this is a, you know, breeds are specific. So if you're going to adopt an animal, you might love this animal, but do you have the ability to get the animal exercised like it should be? You know, this animal is, this breed is, is used to, you know, um, herding, running around for, you know, literally hours at a time. Yes, as, as yeah. a, You know, as a young adult and as an adult animal. And so, you know, they're not the, like another dog, you might really have better luck with a different breed, but you fall in love with this oh, dog. And you so want to be loved to, and cared for. So when you fill out the application, of course, you fill out all your yeah. name and address and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. What, ha what other animals in the in the family? And Shake. we encourage Shake. always having them bring the animals from the home to gentle. our uh, greeting Shake. area, which is uh, in the building girl. as well. And Good they can get girl. an idea of what, how the animals are going to interact. Good it's girl. always a little rough at first, but generally you can tell right away if there's going to be a major problem. Um, not yeah. to say that you won't have difficulties, I don't mean that. But honestly, look at her. I mean, I can't imagine that someone would just want to, you know... We, well, we, honest, we honestly think that she probably was an, an embarrassment in a sense because something bad happened and they just wanted to get rid of it. But because of their inability to deal with it, uh, now this dog has got a full life ahead of it. This dog is, has a great opportunity great to have life a happy life, yes. yes. And this is our ideal situation. Now, um, but the adoption process honestly is simple, but, but you have to demonstrate to us that they, and we might even do a site visit, mm -hmm. because we, there's a box to, to be checked on that adoption form, and would you be against us going to have a site visit, okay? And if they say no, we have flags come up, because why would you object to us we're trying to do the right, right thing for exactly. the animal. Right, And so, how tall, so that hiding? leads to other questions. How tall is your fence? Is it locked? Mm -hmm. Is it secure? Is the dog going to be outside or inside most of the time? a split rail, right, yeah. I mean, all those kinds of things. But then, do you have photographs? Can you show us what your fence is like? And would you mind if we went and did a site visit, which would look at all that? Yes. And yeah. you'd be amazed what people will say is a six-foot fence. Uh -huh. See yeah. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I'm not six feet, okay? Yeah. And it's, oh yeah, it's six feet. Or well, there's a spot in it that's, oh, it's only six feet except for this one spot, and that's almost six feet, and it's only that tall. I'm just right. saying, some dogs are more likely to jump than others. Right, so right. so we, we, we do our best to, with evidence, identify a good owner who's going to be responsible. And then they take the animals with them. And, okay. uh, and, and then they're, they'll have a responsibility if they're not spayed already. By the way, we're getting more and more animals that already have been neutered, neutered or spayed. Uh -huh. And so that is a in, very interesting finding, but we're seeing more and more of that. In fact, we've reduced our budget four spay and neuters this year for the first time I think ever, or at least wow. in a long time, um, because we're seeing more that are already neutered They're being cared or for. sterilized. Yes. Well, yeah. I am thrilled for uh, Kettle Puppy, or Cattle yeah. Puppy, because well, she's got a beautiful life ahead of her. Yeah. A I, loving home, the right home. She's yep. going to be a stunning dog, yeah. stunning dog and companion. <laughs> and so we're really pleased to have the opportunity to do the right thing. And I would say one more thing about that. Please. And that is that we have a professionally run organization here, and I, was, I have a potential donor who was interested in what we do. And one of the things I mentioned to her is that we associate with and partner with people who we know by practice are ethical, who do what they say they're going to do, and they have the animal's welfare in mind. You're and talking about a, donor, not of animals, I'm, but I'm, donor no, no, of I'm talking about people that we partner with. Uh -huh. he, this donor, potential donor wants to know what we do for animals. 
And we don't just adopt animals out. We partner with, with uh, uh, rescue organizations. Mm -hmm. We partner with uh, Seattle Humane uh, for a variety of different reasons because we don't have behaviorists on staff. And we need to have behaviorists actually <laughs> help us or help the animal get to a point where they're adoptable. Yes. Makes sense? That, but, yeah, yeah. but there are people out there who aren't ethical. And if we find that out through our practice with them, then we don't recommend them, we don't operate with them, we don't work for them. We will come to their aid if it's the animal's interest. That doesn't change. Right. But in terms of recommending people or, or I mean, we, we have, it's difficult for us to, to be negative uh, for, for legal reasons, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we do have people that we trust and we have people that we don't trust. We've got staff here uh, you can't see on camera. W what do you think of her? She's the sweetest thing. <laughs> oh, she's adorable. adorable. How could you not love that little dog? <laughs> now, when, when would she become available for adoption? Well, it couple depends on weeks, her recovery, month. probably a couple of weeks, but we can't guarantee that, honestly, because we've got a, a lot of interest already. Oh, do you? Yeah, internal ah. interest. See, that happens. But I can tell you, whatever home she goes to, it'll be a well... So by, by the time this situation. airs, she very well may be gone. She'll, very likely. In fact, we used to do te television programs with adoption options and bring up animals and show them. This is before my tenure here. Uh -huh. About 75% of the time the animals were already adopted by the time people came to look for them. So it, it, it yes, it got people to us, but they shouldn't expect to have waiting for them the animal they see today. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It just happens because it goes so quickly. quickly. Right. People walk and, in the door. And, and, and it means, and you can put a hold on an animal, and if you put a hold on an animal, it's a $5 fee, and it, it's, that fee goes towards the adoption. Mm -hmm. The only reason we don't, we charge a little bit is we want people to really, you know, have Come a, back. invested in it. You yes. Know? And otherwise, because someone else, because they still sit in the adoption room, and other people might want them. And that five what days, or that $5 does not, doesn't that cover the cost for no, an entire no, day for no, an no, animal. No, it's either. more like seven or nine, eight dollars a day per animal, per animal to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Our website is uh, jointanimalservices.org. Okay. And, and they that, can they can see the animals much, that are currently. Pretty much uh, tells you everything we do on that okay. website. And then of course it gives us our address, our phone numbers, and you'll find nice that you. um, if you come here, a lot of people just come in, walk through, and leave. They're looking for a specific breed, etc. And the animals for adoption are all out front. When we were in the cat area, that's uh -huh. the cat side. And then there's a different area where we have dogs. Yeah. But I wanted to show you this little guy because of his story. And it looks like she's biting, but she's not biting. Not no, at all. No, 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 no. Well, not they, tea, they teeth a little bit. They're teething, yeah. But, but it's like a, it, yeah. She just nothing. wants to play. But yeah. we got to keep her a little bit. Quiet. Oh, quiet, yes. Yeah. So here we are, back in the cage, and I know she's not probably good play time. pleased with that. But honestly, that is for her protection. Yes. You know? Now, when she would be adoptable or in the large dog room, which is out back, which mm -hmm. if you were to go in there, be pandemonium with barking, and, you know, those are all animals that are in various stages of being ready for adoption, or they're in quarantine because they've bitten somebody, or they're being held because of legal action related to their care or problems where... So they actually become evidence? They become evidence well, sometimes, the we, animal? If, if they're part of a case, we don't actually own them um, attend, attend, until the determination is made by the courts. Okay, so we've had dogs, unfortunately, we're very unhappy about this, but it has happened, over a year here waiting for a court decision. Where, and it's really sad when you have puppies born during that period of time. And In captivity here. Yeah, and uh. they, they don't get that socialization like they should, and none, none of us are happy with that environment. And, you know, we can't take action like we would like because we would actually foster them out. We have a lot of people we know who are good fosterers. Yes. They'll take care yeah. of animals, socialize them for us, get them back and they get adopted. So that works out really well for us. But then Seattle Humane comes down twice a month and they, they look at various animals as long as they're, you know, have been um, running loose and there's no way we can find an owner and we, we have out, outright ownership. Yes. Then we will, if they have some behavioral issues, oftentimes we'll shift them to that group because they have behaviorists on staff that will deal Which with it. Which means they There's don't have a, they don't have a chip, or you can't find the owner. You can't find the owner, can't right? Or, the owner. Or, or or we have been, they've been surrendered to us, not for euthanasia, but surrendered back to us. Got it. And that includes older animals too. And you see these kitties here. You know, it brings up a question <laughs> I, or something I'd like to talk about if you don't mind for a minute, and that got is the feral cat. Mm -hmm. Feral cats actually are being used as working cats now. It's a new experiment. Working cats. What would you think a working cat would do? Um, I'm thinking of a mouser, one that's going to be yeah, used outside yeah. as a barn. And or uh, a building that has rodent issues, yes, that kind uh -huh. of stuff. Put them to work 
and feed them maybe on the site, sterilize them, vaccinate them, keep them healthy. And if you do that in neighborhoods where there's a whole bunch of feral cats, you actually keep, because when you pull animals out of that environment, the cats just move into that environment. They fill them behind. So you're not getting yeah. rid of them. You can't keep up with it. But yeah. if you pull animals out and you sterilize them and vaccinate them and release them back where they came from, yes, the feral cat's still there. They can't breed anymore. They don't produce offspring. They don't introduce new diseases because you vaccinate it for whatever you can. You know they're healthy going back. Right. And they tend to keep <clears throat> territories, other cats out, which means over time there's less There's fewer, cats, right. Uh -huh. Less problems. Very interesting, okay. Yeah. And that's been shown around the country too. And we'd love to find a champion in a neighborhood somewhere in this community, this county, that would like to try to do that and, and be, you know, one a spokesperson for it, but also help see it through to the, the final results. Because that We're would be a lot of people. Yeah. So within Animal Services, I am now in the Enforcement Office. And uh, with me, I have Chief Enforcement Officer Erica Johnson. And how long have you been here, Erica? I've been here 12 years. 12 years, and that's, that's a long time in this world, because you've seen a yes. lot of cases. You've I seen have. a lot of heart-wrenching. Yes. I bet you've shed a tear yes. uh, over yes. some of these things. And people don't realize uh, yes. how personal it can be for yes. enforcement. Right. Uh, yes. so, so tell me, how many officers do you have? I, we have six enforcement officers here. Okay, and uh, are they out busy right now? Or you don't have all six on now. You have no. like one or two on at a time? Yes, we have usually three on at a time. Covering the entire county? Yes, the okay. entire county. And so what, what type of things are they doing out there? Um, they, do, uh, they do animal enforcement such as they respond to um, animal to human bites and animal to animal bites in the cities. They respond to menacings. Um, we assist the police on their cases. Um, you know, say they have a deceased person, will come and pick up the animals. Mm. Um, or if they've arrested somebody for DUI and the dog or cat are, is in the car. Um, we do dog and cat, animal at large. Um, and we do, um, we, we patrol parks for, for public safety. Let me, let me ask you something, because I think a lot of the, uh, many of the public might have this misperception that uh, I'm walking my dog and my dog, uh, and this is just an example, uh, inadvertently bites, bites somebody. Correct, yeah. Or, or gets into it with another, another dog. Mm -hmm. That, oh my God, don't call animal control because they're gonna take my dog and euthanize it. Correct, yeah. What, what happens in a case like that? Yeah, no, in a case like that, if an animal- People are scared. Right. And I can understand that. Yeah, usually on bites, um, we, we will never, unless the, we're instructed to do so by the, um, the human, the, you know, the owner or the police, we will leave the dog in place for a quarantine, we, but we do have to do a quarantine if, if it breaks the skin and there's fluid trans, transmission there. Okay. But no, we typically, we will not just take somebody's dog. Um, we understand that bites happen. Um, and so we will, we will just have them quarantine in place, which means that they have to keep the dog away from any other human being or um, animal that it's not used to for for the purposes of just evaluation. And and there's I mean dogs bite for a number of reasons. Yes. So it might be a legitimate reason the dog is, is going to nip at someone. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And we we have that uh, discretion as well to determine if it's a provoked bite. That's what we call it. Meaning that did the person go you know and put their face in the dog's face? Did was it a child that pulled on the dog? Was the was the dog scared? Mm -hmm. So it could be any number of reasons. Now are your uh, enforcement officers, are they armed? They, we have taser. You have a taser, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, so if they run into some hostile people out there that don't want to lose their animal, mm -hmm. and law enforcement is, uh, they would be called to assist you, I would imagine, or help yes, out. Yes, yes, they would. And we also uh, call them to assist when I serve my search warrants, things like that. How often do you do search? I don't, people I'm sure don't aren't aware that uh, animal services issues or gets or search warrants issued yes. to seize an animal I would imagine right or search for conditions yes. uh, of uh, neglect that's correct how yes. often does that happen um, I do several a month actually. several a month mm -hmm. yep I probably typically get um, several cruelty cases a week so right now I've got probably uh, 40 pending Cases. You see, and I did 35 years in law enforcement, and I didn't realize that you guys do that yeah. to that extent either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> I've been, I started out my career in human law enforcement, and along the way, I decided that this is 
my calling here. Um, and so I am, I've been trained um, since 1990 to do these kinds of investigations and cases because you have a victim that cannot tell you what happened, which is a lot harder sometimes than a human uh, involved case. Right, so you have to speak for the animal yes. that can't speak for itself. Yes, yes. Wow, so you bring, uh, you're in uh, civilian law enforcement, mm -hmm. you bring a wealth of uh, information and experience and expertise here then. Right, and as part of what we do for the public is um, we teach, I teach animal cruelty investigation um, in the schools, at, at the high school level, and in the vet schools, and at the police academy. So oh. we try to get people to recognize when they should call, what it looks like, and actually we get a, a lot of response. From well, I understand the academy, didn't know you did that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, however, you go into the high school, mm -hmm. what, what other kind of community outreach do you do for educational uh, and being proactive like that? Um, well, we do, uh, we do some rallies at the, at the Capitol and they'll sometimes stream that live on Facebook. Um, but I've, I've also done readings f for children. Um, of course, I tailor it for that age um, in the, at the public library. Mm -hmm. so. Why do you target high school rather than, uh, for example, middle school? Um, I think it's because of the content. Now, what I do is if I'm asked is to address... Is it pretty graphic? Mm -hmm. Yes, it okay. is. Yeah, I've got a, like a 45-minute where I profile different cases so I can show them what it looks like. What does neglect look like? What does cruelty look like? When do you call 911? Now, is that, I would imagine that's got a multi-pronged purpose behind it. Yes. Uh, telling people, uh, perhaps, we're on notice, we're watching, we know what this is. Yes. Also, let them know, if you're aware of somebody that's doing this, please call us and report us. Yes. Or report it, and also prevention. Correct. Uh, but is there like a Crime Stoppers? If someone said, hey, my neighbor, I know they're abusing an animal. Do I call? Do I have to leave my name? What do I do? Yes. Am I going to be, uh, do I have to go to court? Uh, right. Are you going to tell them that I called? Right. And What and kind of protection do they have to save an animal? Yes. And that's one of the things that I explicitly talk about in there because oftentimes it is a family member or a friend. Mm. Um, and so what I tell them is that you can be anonymous and I will develop my probable cause to move forward as I can. Now, if, if that's not possible, then I have to maybe go back and say, would you reconsider? But I do offer them to be anonymous. Uh, how, how many enforcement officers do you have? We have six. You have six. And one has been here 30 years? Yes. Ken yeah. Maynard. Ken Maynard's been here 30, 32 years, I think. 32. Because mm -hmm. I, I knew Ken when he was a young man. Yep. And I walk in and I see him and he hasn't changed. <laughs> right. It's the same. So it's good to see you have a lot of longevity. Yes. And, and Officer Sprague has been here 30. Oh, good grief. Yes. So what, what do they spend their day doing? Um, they spend their day, um, you know, enforcing, um, you know, they, they do at large, they do bites, they do menacing, you know, public safety issues. At um, large just means a dog or a cat? No, yeah. Dog, not cat? Cat too? Cats too. Running it loose, running, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you hear uh, out in the county area, hey, we have a cow or a, a horse that's loose, do you respond to that? No, that would be um, county sheriff's office. Okay. But we have had loose pigs, horses, um, goats in the city too. Okay. So we do respond on that. All right, but no giraffes. No, not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Erica, I saw this uh, award that you were awarded uh, just recently. Tell me about yes. that, please. That was given to me by the Humane Society of the United States. Um, it's an award for um, humane law enforcement. Um, and it's only given out to about five people in the entire nation, and that includes law enforcement and um, uh, prosecuting attorneys and judges. And I was very honored. I had no idea I was being even considered for that. Um, but I, I was very honored by that. And so that was only five a year. Yes. Uh, out of several professions nationally. Yes. And here in Thurston County, you were awarded that. Yes. Well, congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. And that's specifically for? Uh, for, for excellence in humane law enforcement. Okay. Is, that, is it relative to uh, uh, abuse cases yes. in your investigation and bringing those forward? Yes. Yes. Um, I've been very proactive in my career about well, I have a zero tolerance for it. Um, I, th I feel that, you know, it's my duty since I'm tasked with a commission to do so, 
to um, protect and serve the animals here in our county and other counties. I also reach out to other counties, including their prosecutors, and they've reached out to me to ask questions as far as how to how to uh, charge a case and mm -hmm. what to do on it. And you bring up a good point. You are, uh, uh, the enforcement officers are commissioned through the Thurston County Sheriff's Office? Yes, we actually, we Let have- Let me see your badge here. Yes, so we actually have four police commissions. Um, we have one for Tumwater, Olympia, and Lacey, mm -hmm. and then we have another one for the county, but we are commissioned police officers. So each, each chief, and the sheriff issue a commission then, so you can operate yes. within their jurisdictional yes. boundaries. Mm -hmm. the, one final question yes. I, I have to ask you, Erica. You've been doing this for 12 years, mm -hmm. uh, and some of these other officers, 30 mm -hmm. and 30 plus, Right. how do you deal with compassion fatigue? That's a very good question. Um, when I get a new cruelty case, I become very driven. Um, I'm already going through what I need to do for my investigation and getting that animal to safety if it's still alive. All the training kicks in. The training kicks yep. in, and I become very focused and very driven. Um, it, it's actually almost kind of like a physical change for me. But um, the compassion fatigue part of it, um, I just realized that I have to, I'm, I've been given this case, um, I need to, to see it through. I have to do a 100% rock solid case. I have a 100% conviction rate so far. And so I just, I focus. That's what I do. I focus and I know that this isn't going to be the last one and I need to be healthy and whole for the next one. Yeah, but how do you and, and your staff remain healthy and whole? Um, we, we, a lot of humor. Um, we bounce things off of each other. We have each other's backs. Um, sometimes, if it gets too much, you know, we'll just take a break and take a walk, you know, things like that. Yeah, humor mm -hmm. cannot be underrated. Right. Or should not be underrated. Correct. We, we have a lot of humor here. And so when you're, being, when you're, when you're uh, focused on a case like that, I'm going to guess twofold. Yeah. Number one, protect and save the, the animals. Yes. Uh, yeah. And the other is put the bad guy. Absolutely. Yep. I've been putting people in jail. I just... You know, that's my thing is like, um, you know what, if that's all the jail time you're going to get throughout this case, then happy to help. Pretty satisfying, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's my pleasure to stand in your Thank presence. Thank you. My pleasure. To Thank you for you. all Thank you, you do. Thank you so much. Thank you for all you do, Erica. Thank you. I'm now in the office with shelter manager, Heather Liu. Uh, thank you for being here, Heather, uh, and taking the time to do this, uh, this brief interview. Uh, how long have you been here? I've been here 17 years. That's a long time, and mm -hmm. you've seen a lot of changes in animal services, changes in staff. Yes, I would imagine. Yes, and the way things are done, process, policies, procedures mm -hmm. in seventeen years. So, tell me what what services if you can go through a bullet list uh, uh, of services that animal services provides. Um, we provide um, medical care for community animals, um, strays coming in. We um, do, um, you know, stray animals running loose. We do adoptions. Um, we do community education. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think. We do a lot of stuff. We do um, animal cruelty and law. You know, law enforcement. Enforcement. Yeah, enforcement with animal. Licensing. We do licensing um, for all of Thurston County, and that's kind of sums it up. We do also do um, intake of animals that people can no longer keep. Or care for the, or yeah whatever. that and they'll okay. bring them here it's an option for them so let me let me ask you this because I don't think we've touched on this yet today and that is what can people do in the community throughout the community what mm -hmm. what can we do to support animal services um, ad adoptions of animals from us help support and find animals homes okay. um, adoption yeah d uh, donations to help with our court cases when we get them in, we have emergency care, and those can get. So you're talking about on. monetary, yeah, donations, donations or? help um, with that because that is what pays for the care of the cruelty animals Do that have been abused. And when it comes to donations, people just come in and give you a check or give you cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to donate, and is that tax deductible? It is. You know, it is yep. okay, and and uh, I've heard of endowments. Mm -hmm. People can put uh, uh, joint animal services in their in their will. Yes. And did they do that? We do have that done, yes. Wow. And that, and that helps tremendously. Um, the other th um, portion is uh, just volunteering. We have a volunteer program, and they can come in and volunteer to help care for the animals that are here. So you screen the volunteers, yes. of course, for appropriateness, yeah. um, and do a background check on mm -hmm. them. And then they, and you use uh, uh, volunteers 
all around in the services? Yes. With the exception yeah. of law enforcement, I'm sure. Yeah. Law enforcement. Yeah. How many, okay. how many volunteers do you currently have? Uh, a few hundred. Wow. Yeah. So I didn't know that. Yeah. We have them, and they're even for foster homes to care for. We do a foster program, too. That's part of volunteering. Um, to care for either animals that are too young or injured that need a place to stay for you know a couple of months to okay. heal. That's one so of the if um, um, if if somebody has a pet that's deceased, mm -hmm. or they have a pet that they've uh, given to someone else, a neighbor, family member, whomever, um, do you take the bedding? Do you take leftover food? Do yes. You, do you, what what do you take? We can take anything basically anything pet related. Um, small up from hamsters and mice up to um, even some domestic animals as far as goats and pigs we do see those in the city limits mm -hmm. so we do get those in here and have to care for them too so you take physical donations of toys and yep. leftover pet stuff yes rather than people just throwing it away but yes. not medication or medication um, we can take a limited um, types of medication we can't take any controlled anything controlled that's a controlled substance okay yeah. and those you don't have one of those medical uh, boxes the medical drug we box. do not they do have several in the county, though, for okay. people to drop the controlled substances off at. Uh, any other services that uh, that we haven't touched on? Um, we touched on the volunteer program, which I didn't say in the first uh, mm -hmm. first part of it. Um, I think I covered them all. I'm sure I'll remember some later <laughs> that I didn't bring that up. That is but. huge. And, but, and finally, then, what, what do you do as a manager on a day-to-day -day basis? You're managing um, animals, you're managing the shelter, you're managing people. Uh, all of it? All, all of the above. <laughs> yeah, um, doing, you know, medical checks on the animals coming in that have any injuries or any medical concerns, you know, determining if we're going to care for them here, if we need to send them to a veterinarian. Okay. Um, filling in pretty much in any department um, as far as front receiving. Because you're partnering with a lot of uh, uh, organizations and people outside of this organization. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so you keep that uh, that relationship going. Yes, yeah, I'm part of um, being involved in that. Okay. Um, and that um, helps with some of our animals with some behavioral issues and stuff that we can't place here. We've been able to partnership with other agencies to send them up there that have better behavioral programs. Okay. Now, final question. What what time? Two questions. What time do you get off? Normally six is when I'm six. supposed to get off. Okay. So <laughs> final question. Besides six o'clock, what's the highlight of your day? Um, I think just helping the animals is my main highlight hmm. and finding new homes for ones that have been either abandoned or left here. And if you haven't picked up on it, that seems to be the common thread that runs throughout this organization is their main goal, their main drive, their main purpose is to, is to help and it's the welfare of the animals. Mm -hmm. Yes. The ones that can't depend on themselves, they need to depend on human beings yes. to, to protect them and help them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you, Heather. Thank you <laughs> oh, very much. Thank you it's for a coming pleasure in. meeting you. Yeah, pleasure to meet you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, I'm Commissioner John Hutchings. Check tcmedia.org for scheduling information about this and other programs on demand about our community. TC Media, it's local.